Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We have been studying the book of Isaiah, and we have just started. It is the most wonderful book about our Savior. And we have seen Isaiah 53 and the wonderful, wonderful truths concerning the suffering of Christ for each person in the whole world. And we want to go to, to this today with just a little history of God calling Abraham out to come into the land of Canaan that he would give to him. He told him to a place, but when he promised him seven things, you and I are in this also. He says, I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse them that curse thee. This is in Genesis 12, Verse 3, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Israel is the key to world redemption. We're going to find out more about that in these lessons. But the first thing we have to understand is that Christ came. In the book of Isaiah, 27 times, the word he, talking about Christ, is in these few 12 verses, 27 times. That's why we're learning about Christ and what he has done for the world. That's why our message is a heavenly divine message. Divine just means it is a heavenly birth for each of us. It is a heavenly divine calling for each of us. And this is a heavenly divine worship. We come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Because we have a great high priest. And this is something that every person no should know because not only has he suffered all these things for us, he's today serving us as our advocate, as our mediator, and as our intercessor. Because we can't get to our Heavenly Father except through a mediator. And that is our great high priest. He's merciful and faithful. And he's touched with our infirmities. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. And 1 Thessalonians 5.23, The God of all peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray that your spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you must be born again by the Spirit of God, because the Spirit receives impressions of our outward and material things through the soul and the body. The spiritual faculties of the Spirit are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. That's why we go to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need, and His grace is sufficient for every need. When you hear all about these lessons on Christ in the book of Isaiah, we're just beginning, you're going to see that the Gospels teach the same thing when He was on the earth. And we see He carried our sorrows in Isaiah 53, 4. The first one, He hath bore our griefs, Isaiah 53, 4. He's carried our sorrow, Isaiah 53, 4. 
He was wounded for our transgressions. Isaiah 53, 5. He was bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah 53, 5. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Isaiah 53, 5. There is no peace apart from Christ. That's why the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. He is our peace. He's our love. He's our joy. This is our inward life, no matter what's happening. With his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I showed you this last week, and you can never know and hear God's word too many times. You find something new every time you get in the scriptures. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is the whole world. God is no respecter of persons. And we are not to be any respecter of persons. And I want to give these scriptures to you because these are the scriptures that you need today. 1 Peter 1 verse 22. Sin, you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. This is what he commands us as believers, to love one another with a pure heart. What is our heart? Our intellect, our emotions, and our will. We're to love one another. This is a command. This is the greatest need today. Love the brethren. Love those around us. Just like Christ. He never, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. This is how we are to live if we want to be like Christ. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 25, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Born again, loving the brethren to love one another as Christ has loved us. You can see what love he had and how we fall so short of that love. And then the next one is, for the transgression of my people was he smitten for us. He, his soul was made an offering for sin. Isaiah 53.10 he shall bear their iniquities, Isaiah 53, 11. He bore the sin of many. Only those that receive him know about our sins being forgiven. Isaiah 53, 12. Made intercession for the transgressors, Isaiah 53, 12. Now let me ask you just the last one. Have you prayed for your enemies. After they did all of this to him, he looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, this is thy divine love that we're to have for one another. We pray that our love would abound toward one another in these last days and to do what thy word commands us to do to love one another with a pure heart, fervently, a pure heart. And this is what our desire is. And when someone is overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. As we come to this throne today, the throne of grace, we come to the holiest by the blood with a true heart. 
and full assurance of faith that whatever thy word has promised us, we can appropriate it by faith and live this abundant life. This is what we are designed for every believer today. And we thank thee and praise thee for each one. And once again, we're asking that every person that's listening will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. And they can know this peace that passes all understanding. They can only know this through the blood of Jesus Christ and his spirit coming up on each person and his divine nature in us. Renewed spirit. And we want to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we are seeing these, we see his holy spotless character is revealed. As a lamb, he suffered in patience. That's what we are to do. We're, to not, we're not to open our mouth. He suffered and died for others. He had never sinned. There was no sin in him. He suffered for his people. John 11, 50 and 51. One man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. John 11, 50 to 51. The high priest prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. He believed that word, but did he turn to Christ? Today you can believe, but you cannot live like the world. That is a true fact. It was God who smote him, the Lord who bruised him, who put him to grief. Isaiah 53.10 There is in the whole Bible no grander unfolding of John 3.16 than Isaiah 53. Whoever rejects Isaiah's vision of the sin bearer rejects the gospel and denies the atoning work of Christ. Remember, his crucifixion atones our sin. Our sins, his resurrection eradicates our sins. We also behold his grave. We see in him risen, exalted, interceding, justifying many, having a seed and offspring as the last Adam, securing the travail of his soul and dividing the spoil with the great. Our time of rejoicing and glorious and exaltation of Christ comes when we know this word and live it. And then the greater glory is when we're raptured to be with him and receive a body of light that never hurts. <clears throat> we are going to be raptured to meet the Lord. Our bodies are going to be raised from the dust. And those of us that still live in at that time, we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And when he was on the earth, he was transfigured with Moses and Elijah. Peter, James, and John were on the Mount of Transfiguration with him. And it was at noontime. His body was as bright as the noonday sun. When we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, we're going to receive a body of light like his. And we're going to be raptured in the clouds. We won't need a space capsule. We'll be right there with him in this glorious cloud that we have here waiting for us. We are the body and he's the head, twofold headship of Christ. He's the head of all creation. He's the head of everything. He's the head of the body of believers. 
and this body, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, must have unity. There's no division with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're equal in everything they do. We are to do the same thing. One spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ unites us into one body. We are one in Christ. You must always remember that and this divine love that we are commanded to have for one another. Oh, who can tell out the majestic grandeur of this great peak in God's revelation in Isaiah 53. After this great vision, the servant of the Lord is not mentioned again, nor his suffering. The glory side comes more fully in view in Isaiah 54 through 66. The greatest, greatest glory that God has for us. I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. So this is a continuation of the second coming of Christ. More numerous and richer are the messianic predictions which reveal his exaltation and the fact of his glorious second coming. Isaiah beheld his personal, visible, and glorious coming, not as the sufferer, but as the king. Remember in the Old Testament, he was the prophet that was to come. He came as a baby. He was born of a virgin, Mary, by the Holy Spirit and the blood, just like we are. That blood went into the womb of Mary. That is divine conception. The man contributes the blood to the woman, and the woman gives the body to the baby. That's how Jesus Christ could never sin. He was not born of human blood, but divine blood. That's how he's the only person in the world that has ever had a perfect spirit, soul, and body. He never sinned. He saw him coming in majesty and glory. That's what we could be looking for if we are a child of God. His glory is seen in these visions as covering Jerusalem. What's going to happen for Israel? Why shouldn't you not pray for Israel? He says in Psalm 122, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. Remember, his word is as pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. If you pray for Israel, you are going to receive those blessings he's promised because everything in the Bible is good for us. He wants the very best for his child, don't you? And we're a child of God, of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And to, during this age which we're living, Christ is our great high priest. And then during the thousand year reign with Christ, he's going to reign as king. He was born prophet, priest, and king. And we're going to be reigning with him as King of kings and Lord of lords. He comes to Zion to redeem his people and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. You see why Satan, he wants the worship that belongs to deity. And he's going to get that worship in the seven year tribulation period in the book of Revelation. You see, the Spirit has to be poured out upon Israel, just like each of us. That's what we see in Zechariah 12, 10. We will talk more about that in these later, later truths in Isaiah. He comes to overthrow the wicked one and to execute the judgment of God on the earth. He comes to establish peace and dwell in the midst of his people and rule as king over the nations. Isaiah 2, 4. He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. 
Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Why do we have wars? Jealousy and hatred. And if you're a child of God, you cannot hate another person. He plainly teaches us this in 1 John. And I have to give this to you because so many people have never heard this truth. And this is one thing that is desperately needed today. And if you hear these truths and you hate another person, you right now ask God to forgive you and ask Him to allow you to do something for that person that has hurt you. That's God's love. We're to do good to our enemies and pray for them. He says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That's 1 John 3, verse 15. 1 John 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath? not seen. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother. This is God's way, and this is the only way that works. This book is a living book, the only living book in the world. Jesus Christ is the living word. And we see that means no weapons of war. In Isaiah 2.4, Isaiah 2.5, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now this is International Bible School. This is the program of God. Peace on earth will thus be accomplished. You see, it follows his visible manifestation. You see, what's wrong with the world is they don't know this book. This book should be read every day for our spiritual life. We eat food for this body. If we don't study this book, we will never please God because Satan has authority over you if you don't know this book. This is the most important. And as a true believer, and I forget to tell you this, this is really something that I should teach you all the time. As a child of God, you should turn to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John is the book that you should begin to read to understand what salvation means. That's where it teaches, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's John 3, 3, 3. And then John 3, 5, except a man be born of water, that's the word of God, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And listen what he says about those that do not receive Christ in John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God is upon every person that don't know this truth. The wrath of God. This is why the Lord has put me here, to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's why you should pray for this program and the internet program to reach every person. That's what we're commanded to do. So we see in Isaiah 2, 10 and 11, Enter into the rock and hide in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. That's what they're doing in the book of Revelation. They are crying for the rocks and mountains to fall on them. For, for the fear of the Lord. Can you imagine something like that? It just brings tears to your eyes. Listen what he said in Revelation 6, 
verse 16. Now, we're not going to be here during this time. Believers are going to be raptured before this happens. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lord. And you know, you think you try to hide your sin? Listen, every knee is going to bow before him. Every knee in the world. And you, he already knows your heart. Right now, turn from those sins if you're a child of God and turn to the living and true God. Verse Isaiah 2, 11. The lofty looks of man, this is pride, goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. This is who is to be exalted, not man. I, d- I don't want the reason I don't like to even talk about myself because we want our own glory. Christ never received honor from man. This is who we're to worship. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Only he is to be worshipped. He's deity. You learn that in the book of John. There's only 21 chapters in the book of John. And John 1.1 teaches. This is the word of God. This is. He is eternal. This is what you must learn because the book of John teaches that he is eternal and he's the creator. Just the first verse. He says, in the beginning was the Word. Verse 14 said that Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was Jesus, because He's the living Word. And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. The very first verse gives you He's the Creator, and He's eternal. What glory He has for you. Begin today to obey this book and live the abundant life. And thank you for tuning in.